What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. And today we have 141 pound NCAA All American Lachlan McNeil from North Carolina. Lachlan, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? You know, good to have you on the show. Uh, we just saw recently you had a really exciting. Uh, you got you got to go uh, ring the horn at the at the uh, Canes game uh, down in North Carolina. Just give a little bit of what's it, you know what's it been like the last week for you coming back to school in All American. It's been um, it's definitely been interesting, right? There's been a lot of definitely a lot of social media stuff I've been having to do. Um, the Canes experience being able to be the siren sounder was obviously very unique. I've never done anything like that before, so that was awesome. Um, but outside of that, really. When you go to a program like North Carolina and they're so successful in so many different sports, it's it's not the biggest of deals, right? We got national champions in swimming last week just as much as we did in wrestling. So it's definitely um there's a standard of excellence in it, for sure. Awesome. Good to hear. So Lachlan, um, your story is a little bit different than a lot of the people we talk to. You know, a lot of these the guys we talk to, you know, are US born and raised and you know, have wrestled the, uh, you know grade school and folk style all the way through their career. But um, for you, it's a little bit different. So if you want to talk about kind of, you know, your childhood growing up, how you got into the sport and kind of will pick up like right when you're about to go to high school. Yeah, it's definitely, um, definitely unique. So I was born and raised in the Middle East. Um, I was born in Bahrain, which is a small little island country right off uh, the Gulf Coast, very close to Abu Dhabi and Dubai, which is a lot, obviously a lot more popular than known. Um, but I was born in Bahrain, lived there for five, six years. Then I moved over to Abu Dhabi. Um, and I was raised there up until I was about 12. And then I moved over to Canada. And um, I got started in wrestling because my dad had wrestled for um, Great Britain. Um, and he moved over from Great Britain over to Canada. Um, in between there, he'd actually spent two years in um, a JUCO college, Labette College in Kansas. But, um, you, you know, we met my mom in Canada. And, uh, and then we, he found work in the Middle East. And um, he, basically, I started wrestling because him and a former college teammate has just um, linked up in Abu Dhabi and they started a club because there's no wrestling over it, right? So we got about five, ten kids, and um, they just started a club and kind of started the first wrestling club over there. Yeah, that's what a, what a crazy story. Um, so while you were over there, was your dad kind of – was he bringing freestyle wrestling to Abu Dhabi or was he bringing folk style wrestling to Abu Dhabi? Uh, freestyle, freestyle. Yeah. So obviously, um, folk style is, uh, America is the only country that does folk style. Mm-hmm. I didn't really start doing folk style until I was like 13, 14 when I started coming over to the camps. Um, what happened was when I moved back over to Toronto, uh, we saw this G2 at the time it was called G2 Academy. I don't know if the club still goes on, but Adam Burgos, so Ryan Burgos, National Qualifier, and the Jack Mahalises, that was the club they trained at. So the first kind of people we met when we crossed over to, to that camp was the Yakima Hosses, and we're still very close family friends since. And um, it's just interesting how it's such a small world. But that's kind of how we got into folk style was we realized in Canada, especially at that age, you're just wrestling the same kids. And there's not, like, there's brackets like eight, and it's every single week in the same kids. And we're like, at some point, we got to try something new. So when we went down to Buffalo and Upper State New York for those tournaments, it was eye-opening because it was like nothing we'd ever seen before, right? There was tons of kids. There was a lot of people in the crowd, even for little kid tournaments. And we were like, we just immediately fell in love with folk style. Yeah, trying yeah. to find that mix for sure. Uh, going from being in Canada, wrestling the same kid to a whole new world almost for you. Mm-hmm. So you some you know in all this you know crazy and you know wild you know tournaments you've you know got your eyes open to now in in New York, you you somehow end up at one of if not the best wrestling high schools. In the United States of America, you find yourself at Wyoming Seminary, and I would like to say you were part of that prestigious time where it was, you know, Bo Barley, Munch, Gabe Arnold, you know, yourself. Like, you guys were unstoppable. You know, maybe a little bit early for your time, but I know Jack Davis had a stint there, and he was a world-class athlete. And, you mm-hmm. know, that was at the time where Sem was the team to beat. So, you know, what was that kind of like for you, and what was that kind of recruiting process like? And you know, how was how did you end up at Wyoming Seminary? Um, so I ended up finishing my middle school year, and I was did my first kind of year or so out of a high school in Canada, and I'd always wanted to um come over. We just didn't really know how, right? And um, we thought the most logical path at the time was we'd end up going to Hilton. So my younger brother ended up going to Hilton for a year, 
uh, and that's where obviously Jack Morris is wrestled. That's that's was what made it the simplest and most sense for us to get down there. But I guess my um after my first year of high school, Scott Green messaged me on Facebook and he literally just reached out and said, "Hey, do you want to come down here? Uh, you should come down and take a visit, check it out." And I think initially I was kind of recruited mostly to be a practice partner, but um they gave me a shot. I went down there. I took a couple of visits and I immediately fell in love. And I was like, I, you mean, they gave me an opportunity to come down there. And I said, without a doubt, I'm going to take this. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of basically a Facebook message from Scott Green. Got on Facebook. Coach Green. I know he's doing very well for himself out at West Point now. So, yeah, shout so, out to yeah. him. But, you know, what was that kind of like those, you know, obviously you had to leave your family, you know, move all the way out to Northeast Pennsylvania, right in my hometown, actually, where Sam is. And, <laughs> You know, what was that kind of like for you, you know, at a pretty young age to kind of pack up and leave? Uh, it was difficult for sure. I come from a, a, a very, very close-knit family. So it was the, probably the most challenging thing was leaving family for sure. But I understood that if, if I wanted any chance of wrestling in, in folk style, especially at the college level, this is what needed to be done. And obviously going to some sort of procedure school like SEM, you get a bun, like an abundance of opportunities to get good results which will help you for college recruiting uh and so it was it was definitely a difficult transition my first year especially since i was cutting a lot of weight making 120 and then i really feel like i, I found my stride when i came in my senior year and um but yeah the transition was difficult just because you know, i mean my family and i are so close yeah I, I i mean obviously wrestling at that level as well i'm sure you know it was a little more challenging as well but i mean let's just talk a little bit about your high school career i mean what a, you ended up with the gold jacket, which, you know, a lot of people, you know, if you guys don't know out there um, at the national prep tournament, which is, you know, where you get your Sam and your Blair and schools like that go at it as almost like a state tournament. Mm -hmm. You if you win, you get a gold jacket on the men's side. If you win to the women's side, you get a pink jacket. So what was that mm -hmm. like for you slipping that jacket on after, you know, a, I mean, an amazing high school career? A lot of people said, you know, you were a top top high school recruit, number one in your weight class. So what was that like for you putting on that gold jacket? It was it was definitely super sweet because the year before I'd I'd lost in the finals. I'd like that was kind of my my junior was my semi breakout year. It was the first time I ever got ranked. I got myself into um like a top ten kind of position. Um, but outside of that, like I I really wanted to win a prep title. That was a goal all year, and I remember Sean falling short to Trevor Master in the in the finals. And I just, all I could think about that season, even after I won Ironman and Powerade, was I wanted to get back and I wanted to win that prep title. And I wanted to put my name, you know, on that banner and so it'd be an, in SEM history for the rest of, you know, the rest of my life. And uh, it just, it was bittersweet. It was, no, it's not bittersweet. It was extremely sweet, especially when I won and then our team had beaten Blair and we kind of done everything we really wanted to do that year. It was just an awesome way to kind of cap a career or at least a high school career. Yeah. I mean, and an amazing high school career that was, you know, obviously, um, like you said, that was the, that was a year right there where, you know, you got to capture a team title as well. Um, let's just talk a little bit about, um, some of the guys that you teamed with and, you know, the, the careers that they're having now. I mean, obviously you had a little bit of a run in with your former teammate at NCAAs and kind of what was like, what was that like for you, you know, squaring up with him at nationals, you know, having a former high school teammate, you know, and obviously in a third and fourth place match as well. Um, that one obviously stings, right? That one stings a lot. Cause we know each other. Um, we don't really talk. Uh, we were former teammates right now, but we're on different teams and that's just kind of how it is. Um, but that one, yeah, that one really stung. The Aliris one was a lot easier to handle than that one um, for sure. But uh, outside of that, like I see some of the teammates, I saw Drew at Franklin and Marshall. I saw Connor Keedman at um, Hokey Open. You know, I, I saw, I mean, Sam Gabe Arnold was coming over here and he was taking a visit at one point. So, you know, it's it's definitely nice when you meet up with them, you get to kind of reconnect. But um, for the most part, I don't really get to see him much. Yeah. And I mean, I, I feel like that's, you know, that's obviously something that, ha that has to happen when you go to an elite school like that. You know, you see when you, they when they do their commitment day, it's it's a line of D1 athletes, especially mm. from the wrestling department. It's, you know, five, six D1 athletes at a time and they're all going different places. So, you know, obviously had an amazing high school career and I'm going to. Pass over to Matthew, and he's going to talk about your college career a little bit. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, obviously, uh, very impressive college career you've been having. You got you know, All-American this year. Uh, touch a little bit on how that felt. 
it felt it felt good. Obviously, in my mind, I was going to win it, um, but I can understand that I performed very well. I, I wrestled well, and you know, when you're wrestling at that kind of level and those matches are so tight, that weekend could have gone a lot differently. So obviously, I'm, I'm grateful for the way it went, and I'm happy with the way it went. Um, like I said, that third and fourth loss will always sting, obviously for reasons that we're familiar with each other, but also because I feel that I can beat him, and I know I can beat him. So to lose a match where you know you're in a match where you can beat someone, it's always going to sting. Like, I can I can look at the Aaliyah's one and, and realize, you know, he out-wrestled me. And that's fine, because I can get him back whenever I get the chance to. But as of right now, he out-wrestled me. The bow one, it's a little bit different on that, on that end, at least. But, um, so yeah, it was bittersweet. I was happy with the performance, but I would have loved to finish third for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure that one thing being it's a familiar person. Uh, but like you said, when you get the chance, you're getting back in there and getting it. But uh, let's touch on a little the week before you were in Canada, wrestling in Canada. Yeah, um, we'd flown back to Toronto and then we had to drive two hours to get to Waterloo. But um, and it was, thankfully it was on the East Coast, so it wasn't that much of travel. If it was on the West Coast, it could have been a nightmare. But I mean, it is what it is. I'd won the team um, spot, the world team spot the year before. And we were hoping, because we knew it was going to land like a weekend apart. We were hoping we could get a wrestle off. And we tried working with the Federation. It just wasn't possible. So we knew at the end of the day, this is something I knew in September that I, I was going to have to do. Um, and so it was just a matter of taking care of business up there and then coming down and wrestling your best the NCAAs. Yeah, is that, uh, is that a big adjustment for you going from freestyle to folk style and, you know, switching it about? I definitely, when I wrestled that tournament, I wrestled, I changed my style a little bit just to be a little more careful. I was a bit more defensive. I, I wasn't as offensive getting to my legs. I didn't want to get myself tilted. I was a lot more, I'm conscious I'm not getting taken down because I want to get put someone on top. So I, it changed my style a little bit when I went up to that tournament. But obviously, you know, I'm more focused on the folks all season than I was on making that national team. So it was just a matter of trying to wrestle a slightly conservative style when I went up there. Yeah, that's very smart of you. Uh, do you have a preference on which style like you prefer? Honestly, I prefer I prefer folk style. I think I'm naturally a better folk style wrestler. I think it suits my strengths personally compared to freestyle. Um, but I've obviously had a lot of success at freestyle, so I don't mind it as well. I will say though, I prefer folk style 100. Yeah, and Lachlan, a question for you now. You know, obviously. You know, when a lot of people hear North Carolina, you know, UNC, they think of basketball. And, you mm -hmm. know, obviously UNC has been a very successful basketball school for, you know, at this point, 30, 40 years. So what was that like for you and kind of what was that recruiting process like that was like, you know what, I'm going to go to UNC and I'm going to, you know, take it upon myself. And, you know, obviously you had Austin O'Connor there to help you to kind of, you know, put UNC on the map and say, you know, we actually can be a wrestling school as well. Um, for me, it was, it was definitely challenging, right? Like coming out as number one in the country, there was a lot of options I could have gone, but, um, UNC was the best fit academic, academically. It's one of the top five public, um, university. And for my major, it was, it's a very, very strong business school here. So academics was a big factor for me. And, um, and then obviously the wrestling was a big factor. I know that I had, I had Austin there. And if you look historically at UNC's program, they consistently, develop 141, 149 pounders. And I knew that's the rate I was going to be at. You've had Joey Ward, Troy Howman, Austin O'Connor, Zach Sherman, Keyshawn Clark. In the short time that, you know, Tony and Coleman have been here, almost every other year or every year, they have some sort of All-American or National Champion, 41 or 49, right? So I knew that that way, they know how to develop wrestlers there. And I knew I was going to land it that way. And that was obviously a big portion for me. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like growing a Minnesota heavyweight is UNC's mm -hmm. 41 pounders. I mean, obviously last year, you know, Clark, he kind of shocked the world, you know, when he, when he ended up in the finals and, you know, got that first takedown on Nick Lee. I think everybody kind of took a, a breath. It was like, okay, like this kid has a really good opportunity, you know, to, to win it. And obviously, you know, he fell a little bit short, but I mean, it, just a little bit, what's it, what's it like having Austin O'Connor on your team? I mean, a guy that's a three-time ACC champ, you know, and now, you know, this year captured his second, you know, NCAA title. What's it like going into a room every day? And I mean, I'm sure, that's probably your primary practice partner as well, being the weight class that you guys are at. So what you know, what's that like for you? Um, it's 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 motivating. He he's I mean, if you come down here and you talk to guys at UNC, you'll realize very quickly he is a different breed. That kid works 
he's got a couple of screws loose up there, man. He works unbelievably hard. It's and sometimes he says some things and I just they don't seem to make sense for me, but they make sense for him. He just he works so hard. And there's no one that I think deserved to win two national titles more than Austin. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's good here. And we have the opportunity to talk to Austin this weekend and we'll make sure uh we get to talk to him a little bit about you. Um, but I mean, that has to be awesome. You know, it has to be awesome, you know, especially in the recruiting process, knowing that, you know, you have the opportunity to have a teammate like him and a training partner as well. Mm-hmm. No, for so sure. we have a couple of uh, questions from the fans here. Um, one of the fans wanted to know, you know, what it was, what was it like for you, uh, at the Virginia tech duel? I heard, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, of crowd motivation or demotivation for you, uh, at the Virginia tech duel. What was that like for you? I, um, I actually, I, I remember, I, I don't think it was anything specific with me. I was a third match on, if I remember correctly, started at 25. And at 33 and at, and at 25, there weren't huge things, but there was a little bit of shoving at the end. So, like, we immediately knew after the first two matches that it was getting chippy. And uh, what happened was I remember distinctly they had a bunch of these hecklers. And when when we went over to Virginia Tech the year before, they're known for having, um I think it's the cadets, or they have a bunch of hecklers that are always, you know, getting out the rest of us behind the bench. And so they got a bunch of guys drive down this year. And they were sitting right bes- – because uh, in Carmichael, you can sit anywhere, right? It's like – it's not customized seating. You can sit anywhere you want. They sat right beside our bench. And, I mean, they just started chirping from the get-go. And uh, I didn't hear anything because I was, you know, in the back the whole time warming up. And then by the time I'd finished wrestling, I think they'd end up being escorted out of the building or at least the other side of the building. But when I remember, they almost got into it with our 125-pounder. Wagner was over there screaming at him. And it was a bit of a scene, but for sure um, – yeah, those heck, they don't mess around. But I wasn't major, primarily involved in that, at least. So so would you say Virginia Tech is like the ACC's Iowa? They got some crazy fans that get <laughs> after it with you guys? They Awesome. I mean, I'm sure they get after a whole lot more with NC State than they do with us. But, um, yeah, that from what I've heard, I've never been over at the ways, but I've heard that those cadets and the hecklers over there, they can get they can get very chirpy. Well, let's hope, you know, you, you get that experience. And let's hope next season we, we're, you know, we're able to get you back on and we get to talk about – you being at Virginia Tech with the hecklers. Um, I think Rosa has a question from uh, another fan that, you know, sent us an Instagram uh, message. Yeah, a little uh, rapid fire here. He has three questions to say. One is, what is your pre-match routine? You know, I want to know, how do you get that mind right? Um, I'm always listening to music. I've, like, set certain, like, certain songs that are set. I always have. So, for me, it's very specific. Um, when I'm in the hole – is when I'll do my warm-up. My warm-up lasts about seven minutes. It consists of three minutes of running, two to three minutes of warming up my shoulders and doing a little bit of hand fighting drills, and then two to three minutes of doing a lot of fast feet, moving my feet. And then seven minutes before, it's just, you know, I take my headphones off, I put my singlet on, and it's just kind of controlled breathing. There's a lot of, like, breathing methods, box breathing. I put my headgear on, have a sip of water, and then I go out and wrestle. So that's almost something that I consistently do. Got that routine down. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big time. Uh, Next, yes. Is there any other sport that correlates to wrestling that helped you improve a skill on the mat? If so, which sport? A skill on the mat? Um, I don't know about skills, but I did gymnastics when I was younger, up until about 12 and 13. And I'll say that has tremendously helped my wrestling, just because of the, the calisthenics and the core and, and functional strength you get from that. It's tremendous. And I think any wrestler, especially at a youth age, should do some sort of calisthenics or, or gymnastics as a supplement to your training. Yeah, that's some great advice, definitely. I mean, I know I did gymnastics when I was younger, and that helped with my flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, And being from Canada, you know, not everything's the same. Being mm-hmm. in Canada, what food do you believe is underrated or underappreciated? Ketchup chips, 100%. Ketchup chips? Ketchup chips. As a Canadian right. staple, a lot of Americans get, you know what I mean, they give me a bit of a side eye when they see me talk about that, but. You got to try it for yourself. We got Tony. He came up to Nationals two years ago, and he finally had it, and he was like, these things are amazing. So 100%. Where does, uh, where does poutine rank on that scale? Poutine? Poutine's up there. I mean, it's good. Uh, I don't know. If Americans don't appreciate that, then that might be underrated as well, but poutine's good as well. I feel like how can the Americans not appreciate that? Like, <laughs> that's like uh, – I know. It's delicious. That's like something America would love to have. Um so now we're going to go into, we just got like a couple rapid fire questions here. Some are wrestling related. Some won't be me and Matt are going to kind of go back and forth. And um, 
yeah, we'll do that. And then we have one final question for you at the end, and then we'll get you out of here. Sounds good. So, what, in your opinion, you know, you've wrestled all over the world at this point, wrestled in the Middle East, wrestled, you know, with the Canada national team, wrestled with North Carolina. Where was your favorite event through your whole career that you wrestled at? Uh, Tulsa, 100%. Tulsa, there's nothing Tulsa, they can Tulsa, Tulsa for nationals this year was that was the the winner. Yeah, and I'm 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 sure when I get done wrestling nationals, you know, the, my four years Tulsa probably won't even be the best one. But you just you cannot. You know, I've wrestled. On, I've been blessed to wrestle at Pan Ams on the world stage, even at Senior Worlds, and nothing will ever compare to NCAAs. That's definitely good to hear. Um, what's your favorite bag? I'll keep it on the food train here since I'm. Was already there. What's your uh, what's your favorite food around your campus? My campus, Bojangles, what I'm saying. Bojangles, nice. All right. So, Lachlan, if you don't mind, you know, running us through a quick, you know, a quick day in the life. What's the, you know, what are your classes like? You know, what time do you, what time are you waking up? All that. What are you eating? What's the diet like? What's your just day in the life of Lachlan McNeil during the season? During the season. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so probably wake up around six, six fifteen. We got lift to six thirty, six to six thirty, six thirty to seven thirties lift. Um, depending on the day, I'll either have. I usually my classes always almost always end at eleven o'clock. So I like to get my classes early. I'll have two classes before then. So I might be French three and philosophy if I had today. Um, I probably have marketing and man, they're gonna do a science right now some geometry. Hopefully, I get those done, and then I'll finally just have my business um, prereqs or pre- business requisites. But outside of that, you know, I'm a two classes. I get done by eight. I usually go home. I have a lunch, you know, relax for a couple hours, and then I'll come back. And we have practice at two thirty, and it's probably two thirty to four thirty. By the time I get out of there and we get done recovery, it's about five five thirty. Go home, have some dinner, do a little bit of homework, uh, and then I just chill out. Usually, watch watch a movie if I can. Otherwise, it'll be some sort of show. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good schedule you got there. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I've been staying on the food topic, so I'm going to keep going with it. Favorite right, post locking. weigh-in meal? Post weigh-in meal? Yeah, favorite post weigh-in meal. Uh, like once I'm done the tournament? Yeah, right after. What are you getting? I probably love chicken parm. I can't lie to you. I love chicken. Nice parm. chicken parm. What is it with the chicken parm? Everyone's like, liking everybody the chicken has parm. Every, we have done, literally, no joke, we've done three interviews this this week. You know, Pat Glory uh, and Vito, as both of them as well, two national champs, yourself, you know, All-American. Everybody has said chicken parm. Chicken parm or some kind of some kind of Italian it's food. Staple. It's a staple. You can't go wrong with it. Yeah, this is true. And we, we asked this question yesterday to Pat Glory, and it kind of, it was a good question. Favorite wrestling shoe of all time, you know, throughout your your youth career, your high school career, your college career so far. What has been your favorite staple shoe? I bought them when I was my first year at Cadet Worlds. I only got to wear them for four matches and they blew out. But I didn't buy them. I was a little, uh, you know, wrestling sneaker kid back there, a wrestling shoe kid back in the day. And I had, I had the teals, the Adidas teals. And I remember I only got worn for three, four times, but made the way they looked, I just loved them. Those are probably my favorite shoes of all time. Awesome. 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 Yeah, definitely. And keeping on the all time favorites, uh, not food this time, but who's <laughs> your all time favorite wrestler? Uh, favorite? It's close. I I would say Tony, 100%. Ramos is my, Ramos. my favorite wrestler. You know, close seconds would be Kale, obviously. And then um, I was a huge fan of Aaliyah, as you live. So mm-hmm. those are probably my top three. If I have to. All right. One but more Tony's favorite. Goat, you know what I mean? So. Uh, we, need, we need to get Tony on. We're going to have to reach out to Tony and get him get him on the podcast and get to talk to him hey, a Tony's bit. a legend, man. He's a legend. Uh, yeah, obviously, legendary career. And he's becoming a legendary coach rather quickly. So we're going to have to get him on the get him on the horn and get him on here. One more favorite question. Favorite practice partner you've ever had? through high school, through the youth scene, all the way now until college, who is one person that was your practice partner they could say really affected the way you wrestle? 
favorite or had the both like the biggest largest impact? Let, we could do both. Who's your favorite and who's the largest impact? Uh, favorite has my little brother, of course, no doubt, hundred percent my little brother. Um, most impact? That's a good question. Uh, I'd probably say honestly, Keevan or or Gabe Arnold. Those are the main guys I was with. He, yeah, Connor Keeman and Gabe Arnold, my, my senior year, Sam. Those guys always push me. Awesome. Nice. And then we just kind of want to know, what are your plans for this offseason? What are you planning on doing? What do you plan on, you know, getting ready for? It's nice. Uh, I finally have a couple months off competing. I mean, realistically, I wrestled Commonwealth game. I was wrestling all summer, you know, all the way through the kind of season. Um, and then I wrestled the season. So I'll be off the next two months. I'll do a couple ranking tournaments, one in June, one in July. And then I'll see Worlds. Um, and then we'll do the Pan Am Games in, like, December. But we'll also do a season in between then. So, it's nice. A little bit of time off is definitely. I'm sure you'll it. enjoy it just to kick yeah, your feet up a little that. bit and relax. A little bit. I mean, we're, I mean, we've been back in the room already a couple times now. Tony just wants me to make sure I show face. But I think we're in kind of like a, a technique phase. So, we'll all yeah. be absolutely enjoying it. Yeah. And then last question for you, Lachlan. We've asked it. You know, this is you know, our 130 odd episodes. And we've asked every single person you could take three of your and, you know, university of North Carolina wrestling teammates with you into the zombie apocalypse. Who would they be? And why would you take them with you? Three of your teammates. Zombie apocalypse. I think Jace Palmer won just because he's my best friend. I have to, you know what I mean? Um, two probably Spencer because he's the most organized and one of the most switched on guys on our team. And then third, there would probably be honestly just be Austin because that dude's just tough. I feel I'll feel protected around with that guy around, honestly. You know what I mean? You'd feel safe with Austin around. So yeah, it'd yeah, be no Jace Palmer, Spencer Moore, and Austin O'Connor. Austin O'Connor. All right. Well, Lachlan, thank you very much for your time. You know, us Appreciate here at Heavyweight Nation want to create, you know, congratulate you. Well, we wanted to congratulate him on his national title. If you're watching Lachlan, congrats. You know, he's back. Back, yeah. He's back. I'm back. I'm back. Lachlan is back. Off. Well, we, we, you know, us here at Heavyweight Nation want to just congratulate you on your All-American status, and we can't wait to watch, you. you know, what you have in store, not even just in the national scene, but obviously in the Olympic scene as well, you know, trying to get make it to the Olympic Games in this upcoming uh, couple of years. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Of course. No problem. And that's Thanks, been a episode of a Heavyweight Nation podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak to you guys. Have a good one.